All right. Now let's um, talk about Knowles. Something yeah. Positive. So Knowles is the. Hey, I get to talk. Okay, go for it. Anyway, long so story. Got to long about story Nulls? short, in Eclipse four point two, they uh, they also have null analysis. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, IntelliJ has had this for a long time. Finebugs has had it. But basically, you can add null annotations on your code. Uh, and they have their own null annotations. But you can also use your own and you can point to your own and, and whatever. And it does null analysis. So I finally tried to upgrade our code base to this. Uh, and I ran into some issues with their support for it, which is, I guess, the biggest problem I had with it is that once you put null, null annotations on your APIs... You also have to put it on all overrides of any, like if you have mm-hmm. an interface and you put, you know, this parameter has to be non-null. If you implement an interface, you have to put it there as well. Or because basically the absence of an annotation means you're saying it's nullable. So they consider not putting it there and override saying this is nullable now, right. which isn't that great. Uh, and it's the same thing with fields and whatever. The, so, so. This this is interesting because this is something we talk about in the training courses that we do, uh, and there's a funny story behind it as well, actually, which I'll get to. But the the way Scala deals with this is you never set things to null ever in in idiomatic Scala code. You never use nulls. You use option. There's a there's a construct. Option is is a bit like you can think of it as a collection that has at most one thing in it. So it either has nothing in or it has one item in, inside of it. It's like a container. Alone. And yeah, it's, it's a lone thing. And you either have some object in there, or you have none in there. And people, and I had the same reaction, when you first see Scala, you're like, well, that's stupid. That's just like another name for null. And you still get the same problems when you try you, and But you're saying it's it. a value holder, though, right? Yes, it's a it holder, is. Yeah. It is a holder. It's sort of a tuple thing in a way. What it does, uh, and, and it took me, I don't know, six months of programming in Scala to really get this through my head, is what it takes is something that is a compile time error, uh, sorry, a runtime error in Java, which is that something can be null, and it moves it up to the compile time. So the compiler can now null check for you. Because it can tell you you're case, not right? you're not you dealing. Case on the sun. Well, that's that's actually the that's actually the simplest way, but that's the the least useful way. That you, as as you go on and learn more Scala, you learn that instead of once you've got an option which is this container with either something inside it or nothing inside it, you can because of functional it, programming it's like the higher order functions. Kind of I'm still not understanding. You're saying it's statically it's statically checking whether yeah. yes. I don't understand. Yeah. When you've got an option, okay, so so in, in Java, you'd have a string, yeah. say, and the string could be null, right? Yeah. In, in, in Scala, you don't do that. You have an option string. Okay, it's a different type. So you actually, instead of saying a string, if something may not be there, you say it's an option of string. So it's and prioritized it's, on string, right. but it's an option. Right. And so it's like having a list of string. Okay. You've, it's you've, a string you've got, or no string. Right. It's a string or a not string. Now, or a cat or is that a dead similar cat. To, yeah. Is that similar to telling the compiler this is nullable? No, not is, really. It's it's like a... It, 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 nullable is... is and, and there are languages that do this. Like, uh, I think Kotlin does this with null. Right. Uh, the null, the Elvis operator, or uh, they call it, where you're like kind of carrying through the null. This is this is more generalized in that it's, Elvis, it's just yeah. a type. It's just a container... That says I can optionally have something in or nothing in. Or it's almost like a struct that wraps the yeah. actual thing. Yeah. In a lot of code, to be safe, you have to do extra null checks. That's, got well, lots that's, of if that's branches where, in there anyway. Yeah, right? you've got if well, branches in there, yeah. That, well, that's assuming you don't have a null policy. What I like about null annotations, and I'm not saying that's better than right. what you're saying, but one of the nice things about that is it makes the contract really clear. So, for example, if you say that this parameter is non-null, an IDE and fine bugs will do this too. We'll say you don't need this null check here because it is known not to be needed. Yeah, so it's you uh, want you want something that kind of integrates with fine bugs or well, JSR three one eight or whatever. Right, right. That, you want um, the standard annotation. To, right. Right. Yeah. Speaking of that, what is happening with JSR three eight? Is that going to be in Java eight or nine or ten? Or what, do we know anything about it? I don't know anything about it. I'm afraid. I think so. We should take is an that, act, we should take an action item to look into that. Wait. Yeah. Also, the time, the time API is going to be yeah. in, as far as I know. 
speaking of that, that reminds me of something I've seen in some people's code. You know how when you're calling, when you have an inner class in Java and you need to sort of pass a value back from the inner class, what people used to do is to create a, a one element array yep. as a value holder. That's an oh, option. Oh, like a tuple. Yeah. That's an option. Yeah. And the, I think the better yeah. solution, you know, that people should use is the atomic object, you know, the atomic class. So there's yeah. atomic bool. If you're if you're creating a boolean, just create a new atomic boolean. It's a value holder object. That's what it is. Yeah. So create one of those, pass it in, and then you can call dot get, and it has you know has one for int for boolean, has one for object whatever. So there already is a value object class in Java now, which is probably better. It's more like your option class really. Yeah. Uh, than good. creating a, a single element array. Anyway, so I'm actually trying to think what the most common runtime exception that I get now is. <laughs> I think probably it would be awesome exception. No illegal argument exception. And that's partly because um, Scala has this convenience method called require, which is like a precondition when you come into a method, and you say require so that some sort predicate of an is true. Yeah, so it's, so it's like it's a error. Yeah, it's okay. and it is. And what it throws is an illegal argument exception if something doesn't so match. Catching so. things a little bit earlier than you would. Is it yeah. not tied to the to the JD, the JVM's assertion facility with like? No, there is one called um, assume that is. <laughs> What they called it assume but instead of assert. Never assume. 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 Well, yeah, assume makes an ass of you and me is it what does. I always say. But no, but like no one, one of the uses nice thing- that. Uh, assume, assertions seem a bit odd to me in this day and age. Cause, I like assertions, but you can turn them off. That's the crazy thing. That's what's thing. so nice about them. No, but you don't want to turn them off. I do. So I have. <laughs> I have. But I don't. No, don't turn off my assertions. No, so I have a bunch of examples. So- You're the man turning off my assertions. No, it, for example, so like in this tool I've been working on, Lint, you know, there's some, there's a bunch of data structures. I have some sanity checking code where, you know how you can check if assertions are enabled, right? It's a very simple thing. You just create a variable and you assert equals true as an assignment, you know, uh, and then return value. So basically, it'll if assertions are off, you know, it won't side affect the variable. So there's like three lines of just seeing if assertions are on. So basically, if assertions are off are on, I do a whole data structure consistency check. Which isn't cheap, but I'm willing to have anyone who runs the plugin with assertions on, it's going to spend a little extra time making sure there's no problem. So during development, if there's any problem, I'll find out about it. But I don't want these kinds of checks. I mean, there's simple like argument checks in a method. You don't have to. Those could actually be real if checks, not assertions. But I love okay. actually putting diagnostics in the code that have... But it they don't. Seems- they don't spit out crappy log entries. They don't. They actually have no performance penalty for any. Because you know, I don't know if all the listeners know, but assertions are basically discarded by the class loader as it's loading the class. So they have zero performance. But the one it. problem with assertions, it's global, right? So you can't say I want assertions on. No, that's for these, not true. Like for the entire JVM or for yeah, the- no. The, the 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 dash ea flag has a bunch of you can you can pat you can put okay. in okay. a bunch of condition you okay. know like yeah you no one does that I everyone mean, just dash d or the yeah. a or dash ea but I do remember from the past that you can okay. you can actually set package names and whatnot there. So Scala actually has a slightly more sophisticated uh, option for that, which is the elide function, and you How can do you set that e l i d e. Okay. And you can set a value for the allied flag, which kind of raises the bar on what is actually an exception and what isn't. So it's not just on or off anymore. It's like how it's a, it's how interested yeah how interested am I in and you errors. can turn it all the way to eleven. Yeah, basically, yeah, you can turn it to right. whatever you like. But so. one of the nice like so. People have had, you know, these things like with log levels before. You know, what I mean, you have a log level. Yeah. But one of the one of the really nice things about assertions is if you look at a log call, you you're calling log and you're passing in a log level, and then you're often evaluating something. To make that log check, it has to evaluate the parameters in order to pass them to the logging method. So the only way to not do work is to put a whole if block around the log so that you don't pay the yeah, cost of computer parameters. Be nice if. You could do something syntactically that looked beautiful and simple. Yes. But in the bytecode, you had right. an if block around it. We have that. It's called assertions. But it's actually... Because that's, that's what happens. Assertions, as it'll not... something well, like, I, I like a macro in C where you really yes. did put an if block around it. Sure, right? I understand. I mean, so yeah. Java doesn't do that. But the nice thing about assertions is you can do all the expensive crap you want in the assertion because it will not at all... Be but evaluated. There, where's the log call would? There are ways of doing things where you have a log call. What you instead of pa- instead of computing a bunch of string arguments yeah. and then passing them to the log. You function, pass a string format you, with or, an argument or you list. pass a closure. Yeah. 
that then could be yeah. ignored or evaluated. Yeah, that's the trick. Is with a, with a language with first class functions, right. a lot of this right. becomes a lot easier. Well, the thing is, on the VM, cl- oh, yeah, closures yeah. are not free because they basically right. pollute the. You could do yeah, all kinds of pre-processing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so the, the 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 way to get free logging today is to have a final static flag boolean. Yeah. But, you know, that doesn't let you turn it on at runtime later, but it, as long as you compile, if you set it to false, the if block and everything in it will get removed by the Java compiler. So like that yeah. actually lets you have stuff, you know, if you can rebuild between, you know, between release and debug, you're okay. Assertions have this nice property that they're somewhere in between. Things show up in the class file, but they actually have no runtime overhead. Mm. This might not be a problem for most of the code people, right? But if you're, you know, yeah. if you're doing high performer graphics, you really don't want to be doing all this stuff inside of your of your, of your loops so that are doing what you I know, ray say tracing or whatever. Is you do have assume in that case, so you can say assume predicate. But can you assume that you have assume? But does can yeah. you assume that assume uses the assert facility in the VM? Oh yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Good. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you have. Why the why the heck did they rename it to assume? Just, just to be, just um, it's, to be. It's a, it's because of the design by contract stuff that. Uh, it, so you it got sounds to, like Eiffel. Yeah, and that's where it comes from. So when when Martin Precondition. when Martin designed Scala, he took ideas from all sorts of other languages, and the design by contract stuff he took from Eiffel, which I mean, is that where predates Java. Yeah. so it's not like they're reinventing something. No. It's actually going back to older times. Right. And, Sure, I'm just saying it's that more it, declarative. It's saying assume and ensuring were yeah. things that were in precondition, Eiffel. postcondition, and both of those exist in Scala. So they're, the they're more declarative yeah. and passive. You're saying this is what you can assume. It's a statement, right? Right. It's not active code. It's not. It's right. not. Um, what do you call it? Um, imperative code. Exactly. So yeah, you assume things on the way in, and then on the way out, you if you want to do it, you can do ensuring, which is. Ensuring that the return value is positive, for example, yeah. or something like that. So I assume, that behind, this, I assume yeah. behind the scenes these are both just asserts, but they just have a different syntactic flavor to give you the right idea in your head. That, yes. Okay, got it. Yeah. But require is actually the one most people use in Scala, which is like assume, but it actually throws an exception, an uh, uh, illegal argument exception. So this is like Guava's so way of enough. doing parameter checking, right? It's just saying, hey, yeah. I want this method to actually throw whatever if you're passing some yeah. invalid... If you if you pass in if you There's if you're doing a square root wrappers, right yeah if you're doing a square root you require that the argument that's passed in is zero or greater. But how then are you going to return i? We well, don't. In that case, so you have an option, in which other is cases, an imaginary yeah. option, right? Yeah. Then you then you implement a complex numbers class, and then you're good. Anyway, yeah, the uh, the whole null thing that really that the option is definitely a good way to to attack that i also think uh, languages like kotlin that have the uh kind of null you know they have the operators t- to deal with null right that's it it's a good solution to it i think anything that gets rid of a third of the runtime errors that you've got that's so just say, one thing i don't understand because i you know i understand that when you're making a method call with the null operator if you put like a question mark, it means the compiler will will. Say, I mean, you're saying I'm yeah. not sure if this is null, so it'll insert, you know, some extra null checking. Yeah, right. And uh, I actually, JavaFX worked in this sort of way where they actually would like, you know, if you had an expression, it would automatically like bail out short circuit evaluation style if anything was null. So you could call food up bar dot baz, and if right. foo was null or bar, you know, it would basically just you like would it, it would stop. Up. Yeah, you know, and if there's a method call, that method won't get called. Yeah. You just you know, put question marks in everywhere. Well, this is groovy. Groovy does it. Yeah, you know, right I, I assume I mean, the just, question marks is just, just putting if else is all over the place. And yeah, it meant behind the scenes. And I assume point. the question marks are just for performance because what JavaFX did was to just insert the if checks no matter what. There was, you know, yeah. there was no need for you to say because you never want GUI code to crash anyway. Like so, it wasn't performance optimized. It was just saying, hey, don't worry about null. We will handle it. Yeah. Um, and I what see- you get is just the chain of. Method calls yeah. ends up if any of them ends up with a null, it just the whole thing becomes yes, null. that's right. So I, I like that, but it seems like that is not that is a solution for what to do with what to do when there is a null. But the whole idea of knowing whether there are nulls or not is a separate issue, and that's what these annotations are for. Yeah. So at compile time, you know whether it even injects the condition. Like we code, need right? the platform to actually. Like we need JSR 308. I mean, we need the platform to declare what the contract is because right now, as I understand it, the contract is explained in English, Java doc, so on a majority a, of the methods, and it's not even always correct. 
Right. So this would be the annotations going into the JDK and Java C enforcing them. Right? Yeah. So that if you tried to say return null, Java no C, way, right? No possibly way. Java C, right. definitely IDEs, right? This, right? But it's best for this this to live I mean, with if the you really code. Want it, yeah, if you really want it to be dependable, it should just be part of Java C. Yes. But hopefully Java C will not do what Eclipse did, which I'm hoping is just a bug or something, or maybe implementation convenience, and require all overrides to repeat the definition. So, so in it, just to go back to the, the kind of the functional solution, and it's not just Scala, it's Haskell and other functional languages do this. Is the way it works is once you have the once you have the value in this option space, then what you do is you and you can do this with a functional language because you can map functions, you can pass functions into these higher order things that operate on the on the value inside of that. So you just say, okay, map two times this thing and map, you know, divide by five on this thing and, and all these kind of things. And the definition is such that if it's none, it gets passed through as none. And if it actually has some value in there, then the operation gets applied. So it goes through the system and remains none. And that's kind of what the Kotlin and um, Phantom and other, other things that have the Groovy, I think, as well, has the null the Elvis operator, mm -hmm. what they're doing is they say, apply these operations while you can, but if you start with a null, then you end with a null, and you just kind of carry the null forward right. through the system. Which is a much more sensible way to do it than having null checks everywhere in the code. But in, in theory, you could do that with null itself, without option. You could. If the function implementations dealt with null underneath, then the right. guys calling the functions wouldn't care. If you happen to pass null to a function, it would just return null. Yes. Well, I, I wonder, I, I remember for Solaris, one thing you could do for a native, you know, when you were doing C development, there, there was a way to set things up su such that a null reference would just return null instead of dumping core. Right. You know, this idea, See, the this idea that dereferencing yeah. null throws an exception, it's good for finding bugs in the way that Java works today, but it's not necessary. Right. It could just basically return null instead. You know? Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, carry a null forward. That's the obvious answer. At some point, at some point, you do have to come back and say, okay, now I really need, I need something. I either need a value or I need a default. As long as we don't say, well, all you have to do is just check the Erno global variable to see if the system <laughs> succeeded or not. Well, it's almost like NAN, right? So NAN is sort of the null for floating point. It's like, yeah, yeah I don't know what that is. NAN, yeah. NAN, NAN. So then whenever you multiply a NAN by it's anything, you get a NAN. NAN. It just yeah. starts to like glom all over. Yeah, and, and it, take it's over. a sensible way of yeah. dealing with that. Well, you, yeah. What you don't want is NAN times something to be something other than something. Well, what's NAN divided by NAN? One. I thought it was forty-two. <laughs> See, it does. It does get tricky. It should be Nan, right? But isn't that a kind of a cat? <laughs> <laughs> meow. Nan cat. <laughs> meow, meow, meow. And it actually caught a couple of corner cases, so that's always yeah. good. There was one the thing that gets me is that you know how the for each loop in Java, if you if you pass null as the thing you are iterating over, it it's unhappy. That's an oversight. Why do they do that? Yeah. If you call, you know how the file dot list files API. If you have a file and you call list files on it, it can return null, and it does every now and then. Well, that may be a mistake in that it should just return an empty iterator, right? Yeah, iterator. but it, it can return null. And the point is that if you then call for each file over that result, you get a null pointer exception. Yes, it shouldn't. Um, if you iterate over null, it should just not do it. Right. That no, but is just annoying. That yeah, it, like, okay. they decide, it should hide it for you. But if you that, talk to Josh, ever you useful? would say that you know all these cases, a good API should return empty collection. Right. The point is, we don't have those good APIs. We have lots of APIs that return null. So <laughs> you know, it would be really nice if you didn't have to put an if block around every for each. I was just going to say on the null thing. One of the points that I had to bring up was in a couple of the jobs that I've worked in. One in particular. Null was used very, very wrongly, in my opinion, as a third state for Boolean. <laughs> and yeah. you must have seen this. So you have Boolean true, Boolean false, and null. I've done it myself recently, so I'm a little ashamed. The, What's the, wrong with that? It's just the, issue, the issue I'm having That's is... That's ternary logic. You should actually have a ternary thing for Yeah, but we don't logic. have one of those. You can make one. 
in a, in a civilized language, you can actually have yeah. a true force and maybe the issue yeah so i just did this recently <laughs> because you know in in android we have a property editor and the layout editor and you have to deal with the fact that there you could have specified a boolean but you could have not specified it so it's basically like it's either yeah. true false or not specified and so yeah. if you use the boolean class not the not the literal but you use the boolean it's either true false or no which means yeah. not specified you see true ternary logic is true false or maybe well, that's a different that's, thing that I'm specifying, which but what is you about know probably not and probably not, and well, then, so what you, what you then want, you have quint quintary. No, it, what you want probably then is it, this is fuzzy logic you're talking about. Right? So it should be a double anywhere between zero and yeah. one. Zero is false. One is yeah. true, and then anywhere between is zero confidence level. Probability. Or, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I just thought that was another reason that nulls are evil. <laughs>